time for a new spy thing. It's exploring time. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are going to be exploring an Epiphone Explorer base from 1999. So this is one of those bases that I never thought I'd ever be interested in trying, playing, let alone owning and demoing on this channel. Because when it comes to guitar looks, I consider myself quite conservative. I don't like anything too wacky or out there or spiky, pointy, crazy. And uh, that's exactly what this thing is. So outside of this channel and my full-time job, I also play in a Foo Fighters and Nirvana tribute band. And of course, Chris Novoselic is famous for playing a Thunderbird and a whole host of other Gibson throughout his time in Nirvana. Was in the market for an Epiphone Thunderbird. I was looking on Facebook Marketplace around me and lo and behold, what pops up in the Epiphone base search? This bad boy. I've never really liked explorers even in the guitar form let alone a bass um, but when i saw this i thought to myself yep i'm gonna have to buy this and there have been things about this bass that have surprised me and some things that have not surprised me at all <laughs> let's give this one a bit of a rundown we have got all gold hardware on here and one of the things that i really like about the explorer over thunderbirds is the bridge We've got this almost like medium mass bridge on here and it is super solid, so much better than those horrible floating three point bridges that are on all the Thunderbirds. I hate them so much. We have got this ridiculously long headstock at the top. It goes on for an absolute mile. On the back of the headstock, there is a sticker to say that it was uh, checked in the USA factory, which is a cool thing to know. The nut width at the top here is about 1.65 inches. And one of the key features here, look, we've got a real brass neck, a br neck? brass nut at the top. So that is really, really nice. Of course, you can tell that is a full rosewood fretboard looking beautiful on this actual mahogany set neck. Look at that. Now, these are called the Carina Explorer bases because the body is made of Carina. It's not a wood that I'm familiar with previously. I've never played something with this. Um, and it resonates so well through it. The sustain on this bass, you know, combined with the nut, the set neck, the woods, and that kind of medium mass bridge, it sustains super well. Now, when you're holding this neck, it's it's not massive. It's, it's actually pretty comfy. I'll get onto the playability a bit later. On our controls, we have got a volume, volume, and a massive tone control, and a three-way pickup selector on the lower horn, and that is selecting between the two Thunderbird style passive humbuckers in the neck and the bridge. <coughs> and before I give kind of my full thoughts on this bass overall, let's take a listen to how this thing sounds. All of the clips you're gonna be hit, all of the, all of, all of the clips you're gonna be hearing are through the Line 6 HX Stomp. I feel like this bass, and one thing I wanna say later on about the sound of this bass is that it adapts quite well to different amps. So as well as listening to the DI tracks of this bass, we're gonna be running it through our standard Galleon Kruger head. And we're also gonna be listening to an Aguilar tone hammer that is slightly driven. So uh, yeah, let's jump on in and have a listen, shall we?
So as you can hear in those clips, this bass can do quite a lot, but not a lot at the same time, I feel. The neck pickup, it's subby and muddier. It's really not very well defined. Combine it with the bridge though, and you get a really nice sound. It definitely gives it more of a scoop sound as that bridge humbucker is being brought in. And I think that that pickup positioning works really well with the more modern sounding Galleon Kruger amp setup. It gives it the best punch. Having taken this bass along to band practice, that is the pickup setting that I had this bass at. However, I think the real singing star of this bass is actually the bridge humbucker. Having the tone wide open and putting some drive on it, it's got really nice definition to it, especially when you're starting to go up the fretboard. So sound wise, I think there's some not so good Good tones in here but also some really usable tones and some really fun tones as well. Now let's get on to the meat of my opinion of this bass and that is to do with the playability. Um, it sucks. <laughs> well it doesn't totally suck. When you're sat down it feels great but my god this thing is a behemoth. It just feels like the neck goes on forever. I feel like you're playing like this. And of course, with any kind of vintage styled Gibson Epiphone style bass, does it have neck dive? 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 I've got a pretty standard size strap on. Uh, I'm just going to let go and uh, see what happens. This is how I think I should always play the bass. Yeah, this thing is an ergonomic nightmare. When I took it to band practice, after an hour or so of playing, I needed a rest, I needed to put it down because my left arm was killing me from holding this thing up. It was not fun to play over a long period of time. Now of course that could be remedied perhaps with some heavier hardware down here, a better, thicker strap, some lighter tuners, or even if you put a preamp in here, that might offset the weight, the balance a little bit. Let alone this thing here, which your arm just kind of has to sit around. There's no contouring at all on this thing. I mean, maybe if I'm playing like this, if I'm uh, pretending to be a train, so if you're looking for a Thunderbird like I was, should you buy one of these instead? It still has the same issues as a Thunderbird classically does, um, but I definitely feel like this one comes with a few more problems of feeling like the neck's going on forever um, and just not having its own tonal character. This thing is a showstopper. It's all about the looks. You've got to want this. And there will be people out there that really want these. It's not for me overall, but that doesn't stop me overall having a really fun time playing this at home. Let me know in a comment down below what you think about this kind of bass and whether you yourself would ever rock an Explorer. Once again, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.